Indox. I extend a very warm welcome. The member for Indox. Thank you. Um, my question is to the Prime Minister. Prime Minister, Australian textile mills in Wangaratta is facing a 141 per cent increase in energy costs, and the timber manufacturer D&R Henderson in Benalla tell me they will pay a million dollars more for electricity 2017 than last year. And there are over 20,000 people in Indi employed in the manufacturing sector, and the loss of these jobs is a very real threat. Industry is willing the parliament to get on with good policy, combining affordability and sustainability. And while the Finkel Review provides an opportunity to deliver long-term energy security, what practical steps will the government take to address the immediate impacts of ballooning energy costs and the demand for renewables, particularly in my electorate of Indi? The Prime Minister has the call. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And I thank the honourable member for a question. And regional communities like those that she represents contain the full spectrum of our economic life. Agriculture, manufacturing, mining, timber, tourism, every, every aspect of our economic life is represented in her electorate and in the electorates of other members representing regional communities here. And affordable and reliable energy is absolutely critical to ensuring that those businesses which she spoke are able to continue to provide the jobs, provide the economic growth that her communities need. Now, this is what the government is doing right now in the here and now. The biggest single impact on wholesale prices at the moment has been the rapid increase in the price of gas. That has been driven by the shortages I spoke about a moment ago because of misguided decisions, reckless decisions made a long time ago by the previous Labor government, both here and in Queensland, to allow more gas to be exported than was available and, of course, the government, Labor government and the honourable members' state to prevent the exploitation of onshore gas resources in Victoria. So we've taken the tough decision to put export limits on gas. It's not one we take any pleasure in doing, but it will ensure that there is sufficient gas for the domestic market. At the same time, we're accelerating reforms to the way in which gas pipelines are run, because, of course, we want need to see more transparency so that the cost of moving gas around the country comes down. That is another key component. We're also pushing the states to deliver on electricity market reforms, and we have the ACCC look as the, as the tough cop on the beat looking at the way the electricity market operates, the retail market, and in particular, the honourable member would be well aware of concerns expressed by the Grattan Institute and others by the way in which retail margins have grown without any uh, explanation or justification in her state of Victoria. Now, at the same time, the honourable member asked about renewables. The key thing we need to have to make renewables reliable is storage, completely overlooked by Labor. To my best of my knowledge, no mention ever made of it by the Labor Party and certainly overlooked uh, by the Victorian Labor government and most negligently of all by the South Australian Labor government. We have put that on the map. Not only that, we are going ahead with Snowy Hydro 2.0, which will add 350,000 megawatt hours of storage into the system, the largest introduction of pumped hydro in our history, all of which supports the increasingly distributed and variable generation of electricity, including in the honourable member's electorate. The member for Page. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, my